My name's Melissa Spell, and my son Ashton has autism. He was diagnosed when he was two, um, but I kind of always had a feeling right after he was born that something, I don't want to say wasn't right, but something was different. Um, he wasn't at the same level as all the other toddlers were, and I took him to the doctors, and they said, oh, it's normal for him to be a little bit behind, and so we just kind of waited. And then when he turned a year, we realized, okay, he's not really walking yet, or trying to, and, and then he really wasn't talking, and the doctors were saying he should be saying, you know, a handful of words by now, and, and he wasn't. He wasn't saying mama, he wasn't saying dada, he wasn't trying to say those words. Then he started doing things that were out of the ordinary, different, walking on his tiptoes, the hand flapping, um, making weird noises, screeching noises, tantrums, really, really bad tantrums, um, hitting his head on wa the walls and um, and so, you know, we took him back and they did, ran all these different tests and, um, you know, he saw a psychologist and by the time he was two, it was finally when he was diagnosed with autism. To hear that your son has autism and could potentially and most probably have autism for the rest of his life. Um, it's almost like you don't want to believe it, I guess, in a way. You're kind of like, well, we'll just see. Let's just see what God has in store for him and for us. And it was definitely all new for me. All the little things that you worry about when they're really little may not be exactly the same, but they still carry on. It's like having a child that never really grows up, I guess, mentally. But, um, you know, you worry about how he's going to react, you know, how, how is he going to feel around a large crowd of people? Can I keep him quiet during the wedding ceremony? Can I keep him sitting still? Is he going to make people stare because they don't understand why he's making the noises he's making or why he's throwing the tantrums he's throwing? I mean, these are all things that kind of go through your head when you make a decision on where you're going. My hopes for Ashton, um, more than anything, of course, is to eventually someday become verbal, learn to talk, learn to communicate with people, especially with me. One day, hopefully say, mom, mama, mommy, whatever, I'll take it, any of them. Um, be, be able to address me. I always think about when he gets older, if he'll be able to take care of himself, if he'll be able to fall in love, all these things. Will he be able to understand that? I just hope that he, even if he's different, even if he doesn't come to the same understanding of life and of things like a normal person would, I just hope that he's happy. In the night sky, or a beautiful sunrise, well, there's so much they hold, and 
just like them old stars I see that you've come so far to be right where you are how old is your soul well I won't give up on us even if the skies get rough I'm giving you Gary Rigsby and I'm a parent of an autistic adult named Corey. She's 36 years old and she's been diagnosed as an autistic child since she was four. Corey was uh, diagnosed as autistic but she was also developmentally delayed. She was not uh, reacting to the common the common noises and sounds of a, of a home as a as a two to three year old, and so we started wondering what was going going on. Corey was not developing with her with her with any speech or with her recognition of sounds and and uh, lots of other things. She wasn't walking at 18 months still, uh, so it come about that. Corey was, is a very low functioning autistic child. Through uh, her schooling, she was involved with uh, the, early, the early autism programs through uh, the county schools. We uh, also had her in the county regional center. A after she turned 22, she was not able to continue in the, uh, in the county schools program and so then she somewhat graduated to being part of the Ventura County Art Program. And they do different things uh, with different handicapped people in that program. And our, our goal now is, as a 36-year-old, is really not speech development, but to get her to be able to, uh, not to function uh, in the community, but at least be aware of what the community is. So we have her doing a, a number of community community things through her IEP, through, through the autistic program. For my wife and I, it's like probably having a one to two year old 36 years. She has very poor self-help skills. Uh, she's not totally potty trained. Uh, she can only feed herself if it's finger food. She does not feed herself very well with with uh, fork and spoon without prompt. She can she can handle it, but you have to prompt her with it all the time. She does not dress herself. So any of any people that's had a, a young baby know you know that those babies are going to grow up and you don't have to do, do all those things for them. Well, with Corey, we've had to we've had to do most all of those things for her. Uh, as far as the the impact that Corey had on our home. Uh, I almost think that my wife and I were put on this earth to raise an autistic child. Probably it, it affected our home being a better home because of her, only because you don't take things for granted. Being able to relate to how, how my family handled the autism in our family through all these years. Uh, I, w I will say in this testimony that uh, as a math teacher at, at the high school that I taught at, I used to once a year go to the psychology classes and give just about this same talk, this same type of testimony to the psychology classes, just so that they would understand the issue of not only just autism, but adults with disabilities, special needs people, and how we should 
not look at them as damaged goods, but that we have to look at them as people that need some kind of, if not our own, help. Look, I'm in the autism walk now. Do what is and you might one ask like how does autism feel? It feels When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear and there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up Hi guys, my name is Anthony Bennett. We are from, we represent Cal State University, Northridge. Uh, we are with the fraternity Tau Kappa Epsilon. The reason we are here is because we support AZD and their uh, efforts to support Autism Speaks. Hi, I'm Audra Hunter and I'm here supporting my nephew, D, D's team. And um, I'm here in hopes to uh, make, put more awareness towards autism. I'm here to uh, support D and his mom, Sybil, and I also hope for the future there's a, a cure, a cause and a cure. Christian Mejia. Why are you here? Because I want, I have autism myself, so, and I want to, I, they're, they're, we're trying to figure a case, because we really want to figure out a case to stop autism. But next year, bring money. If you want autism to gone, bring money. Alive.
From the first breath that you take To the first step that you make You will know I'll be there From the first time you open your eyes Oh, when you laugh or when you cry You will know I'll always be there And when you hear the rooster crow You will know it's time to open your eyes We're gonna laugh, we're gonna sing Till the sun goes down and we'll do it all again And when the night time comes I'll say goodbye my little friend But don't you cry Cause in the morning I'll see you again We'll be on top of the world Sitting on top of the world With you